Hey everyone, Mark here. Let's have a look at the cost of ownership and the ownership experience of running a used Porsche Cayenne. Now I'm driving a 2011 Cayenne, so we're looking at a car that's about eight to nine years old here. And I'll go over how much it's cost to run, the general ownership experience, and what I think of the car so far. All right, so in terms of the cost of ownership, there's a few things one needs to bear in mind. Now I've owned the car for about six months. The first cost you're going to accrue are things to do with just general registration. Those you can't really do anything about and they're going to be jurisdiction specific. So I'm in New South Wales in Australia, so I need to pay stamp duty, I need to pay registration fees, I need to pay compulsory third party insurance when I register the car. So I can't really do anything about those. Those are relatively standardized costs, but they're going to vary across jurisdiction. So for people in the United States, they'll often be different across states. And in Australia, they're going to be different between states as well. So I won't really address those ones because they can just vary so much depending on how on where you're living. The other cost that will arise when you're initially getting the car is compulsory third party insurance. Now compulsory third party insurance is going to cost not an insignificant amount and how much it costs is going to depend on where you live and also depend on your driving experience. So I've generally owned corporate cars in the past, or at least not owned them, I've run corporate cars. So my insurance has been under a corporate entity. So for that reason, I don't have much of an insurance track record. As such, I don't really have really a no claim bonus to really speak about. So therefore my insurance is relatively higher than that of other people. Subsequently, the insurance cost that I would experience of about 3,300, 3,600 per year won't necessarily be representative of what you're going to have to pay. But that's roughly what I've had to pay myself. Uh, it's done uh, annually or done monthly, depending on how you want to pay it. So that's how much my insurance costs, but your mileage will obviously vary depending on the nature of your insurance company and also the nature of your driving record. All right, so those are the first upfront fees. The next thing is, well, what about maintenance fees and what about consumption? So in terms of maintenance, the big ticket items that could hypothetically come up are going to be repairs and things that break down. I've had literally nothing break down on my car. So as a result, it hasn't been that costly. So nothing has actually needs to be repaired other than the light bulb, which obviously wasn't the most expensive thing in the world. Of course, one can just replace an ordinary uh, turning indicator with another turning indicator. So it's not a hugely expensive thing. Any mechanic can do that. The other expenses that accrue are things like tires and things like brake pads. So because I bought it used, uh, brake pads need to be replaced. That's not terribly expensive. I haven't gotten around to doing it at the time of recording, but I don't envisage major costs. I have had to replace some tires. Those aren't that expensive in the grand scheme of things. They're not the cheapest tires in the world, but they're not the most expensive. To give you some perspective here though, I'm otherwise driving a Lamborghini Gallardo, so the tires are going to be a little bit cheaper than those, but not much cheaper. So those are the main consumables I've had to spend money on. In terms of fuel consumption, which for some people is relevant for an SUV like this, it has been actually quite reasonable. Now, how much fuel you consume is going to depend on how you drive and where you drive. I, if you're in gridlock, you're going to consume a lot more than if you're driving on country roads like I am right now. So how much you consume really is so variable. It's tough to give a good indication of this. What I can say is it consumes a relatively low amount of fuel. Its fuel consumption is better than the Porsche Cayman I owned before this, and it's better than the Lamborghini Gallardo I also drive. As a result, I'd say the fuel consumption is quite good. It hasn't been hugely expensive to run, so I wouldn't really be complaining about that. This then moves us on to things like servicing. Now, servicing a Porsche is not cheap. Uh, Porsche service at the uh, workshop at the Porsche dealer is going to cost about a thousand Australian dollars for the service to be done. Plus, there might be other consumables that arise. So, it's not going to be the cheapest uh, cheapest uh, servicing in the world, but it's not the most expensive. To put it in perspective, my Lamborghini service was almost two thousand dollars, which again I thought was actually quite reasonable given how difficult it is to get access to some things. But still, this won't be the cheapest thing to service. I would generally recommend having it done at the dealership, primarily because when you go to sell it, then you can say that you have full dealership records or full dealership service records. They're generally quite easy to deal with. Generally, you'll get more roadside assistance with the dealership. So in general terms, it's better to just get it serviced at the dealership than doing it elsewhere. So that's the other major expense that arises. So in broad terms, it's been a super cheap car to run because fuel consumption's been fine, nothing is broken, 
the general consumables haven't been that high and have just been general ordinary things that need to be replaced like with any other car and they haven't been that expensive to replace. This leads on to the next issue of how have I found it over the past six months. Now in general terms I've actually found it very pleasant to drive and pleasant is probably the best description. It's not thrilling or exciting, its acceleration is adequate but it's certainly not super fast, there's nothing to write home about but it's okay. Uh, I quite like it, um, it's good as a daily driver, it's comfortable, uh, you waft above the road, you do feel some speed bumps as feel the road still, but it's not horrible, it's quite fine. Uh, in terms of just generally maneuvering it around the city, it's quite maneuverable, the turning circle is fine, visibility is very good, it has a reverse camera which helps quite a lot, uh, so it is actually very easy to drive and it's very pleasant. Uh, is basically the best way to describe it. Now, I wouldn't buy it if I were looking for something sporty, but if you're looking for something pleasant, it's good, because the acceleration is not wonderful, and you do still feel the road, but it's not going to be egregiously bad in terms of the ride quality. The steering and handling is perfectly fine. There's nothing particularly problematic about the car, and it's quite nice to drive. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say, like I said, that I enjoy driving it, but I don't mind driving it, is basically the best way of putting it. So if you're looking for an SUV, my six month ownership experience would suggest that the used Porsche Cayenne is actually quite good. Now the next issue is what about practicality and transporting things around. Now I've already said that it's very maneuverable, turning circles fine, reverse cameras are good, parking sensors are there so it's easy to drive around. In terms of storage space, I don't know off the top of my head exactly how much it stores in the trunk but it is quite good. So I've transported big pieces of art around in the car, like really big pieces of art that are like two meters long, which is admittedly a little bit of a squash, which you kind of have to move the seats around, but the back seats fold down flat. There's a lot of space in the trunk. You can transport a lot in there. Uh, I haven't- In 600 meters at the roundabout, take the second exit and stay on Nelson Bay Road B63. I haven't had to transport a lot, but when I have had to transport those things like art or occasionally taking people out to the airport, it's been quite capable of transporting enough stuff. So in that respect, it's been quite useful. Now I personally only need to take a briefcase out to work, so it's not like I need to transport very much out there, so I haven't really needed to- Exit the roundabout onto Nelson Bay Road. So I have- Continue on B63 for six kilometers. Now I haven't really needed to test the storage capacity because I only really need to take a briefcase out to work. And I have, like I said, only really transported art around. So for transporting art around, which can be a little bit bulky and big, just the dimensions can be awkward and you can't really fold it or squash it, it has actually been quite good. Now this then begs the question of, would the Macan have been more practical and more usable for me? Because it would be smaller, incrementally more maneuverable. In my personal circumstances, I'd probably stick with the Cayenne. And that's really for two reasons. A, I expect resale will probably be a bit better because it's just bigger and therefore you, uh, serves more use cases. Secondly, I'd also find that if I'm transporting art around, which has big dimensions sometimes and is not squashable, it's actually been incredibly helpful for that. And I can't overstate how useful it is for specific things where you need big dimensioned items that are fragile. So that's basically been my experience over the past six months, how I've found the car and what I think of it. I'd probably recommend it if you're looking for a car that is easy to drive, is relatively practical, is comfortable, enables you to waft above the road, but still has a little bit of oomph for when you need to drive. Like I said, not thrilling, so if you're looking for a sports car, maybe a different SUV would be the one for you. Maybe a GTS model or something along those lines. So this has given you a bit of an insight into how I've found the Cayenne over the past eleven, uh, past six months, and why I think a used Porsche Cayenne is at least worth considering if you're in the market for an SUV. So thanks so much for tuning in. If you found the video somewhat useful or vaguely interesting, it'd be great if you click the like and subscribe buttons, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.